I'm Daniel Gillian. I am the project manager of at, uh, Inclusive Mobility, uh, program manager of Inclusive Mobility Institute, Ateneo Institute of Sustainability. I do some work for Ateneo School of Government and also a lecturer at Japanese Studies program of the Ateneo de Manila University. I'm a graduate of UP Sociology, Urban Planning from UP Diliman, as well as Policy and Planning Sciences from University of Tsukuba. Um, my dissertation is about informal transportation. In your website, this is the section what is inclusive mobility. Define what the term is or does it refer to the goals of your project? Inclusive mobility is actually about um, engaging the public, different sector, different discipline, into discussing um, the idea of transportation, of a truly inclusive uh, transportation system. So it's a concept that aims to shift the paradigm of thinking for the vehicles, but rather on how to move people and goods. So the focus is more on the accessibility, the safety, the civility, the productivity of of the public utilizing the I mean the transport sector. To what extent have the goals been realized? When you say goals, I think this is more of one is an it's an advocacy. It's a concept it's really advocating on how you you shift the paradigm of thinking about the people with regards to the transportation sector. So one of our major objectives is of course to inform and educate the public. So a certain degree, now we're seeing more cities because our first target is really for the for the government also and the public to realize the importance and how they as an individual, as a community, as a city can help in coming up with a truly inclusive mobility, uh, inclusive transport system. So to that extent, we've seen some cities already responding to that here in Metro Manila. You've got Pasig City uh, initiating carless streets. When we say Sunday carless streets, it's really to educate the public on the importance of road sharing. So the idea is you first educate the public on appreciating the roads. That the road the roads we have are actually meant to move people. So first is the prioritization on, of course, trying to improve your pedestrian, coming up with cycling lanes. The idea is before you can learn how to drive, you should know first how to use your non-motorized uh, mode or learn first how to to appreciate the, the beauty of walking and the idea of a more environmentally and sustainable way of transportation. So currently, I think we're focusing on the heavy infrastructure, meaning we're focusing on roads, we're focusing on, on skyway, highway, but we're not looking at the very basic means of our mobility, which is all about walking. So if you've noticed, if there's an audit, walkability audit, I don't think Metro Manila can have a high grade on that. Simply because walking is seen as just used for side homes. So it's more on ano, diba? more on more on just a sidewalk. It's just an easement provided by your developers. It's not really focusing on on making it walkable. And even the integration of non-motorized um, lanes, I mean for example cycling lanes you seldom see that. But there's already one really trying to have that. You have Marikina. So there are good models. UP already has the, the oval, right? The Carlos oval. But the thing is, for example, for UP, I don't think you're really utilizing it for, for utilitarian purposes, meaning for your door-to-door -door service. Normally, cycling here is just for sports. Just the way jogging is for, you know, or running is considered a sport. But yung walking, which is part of your everyday, you're making it convenient, it's not being highlighted. Then I think, as you mentioned earlier, you take it for granted eh. But it's the basic, diba? You can't move from one place to another without walking. But currently, there's a tendency, I think, especially for those 
uh, to have like a door-to-door -door service without really thinking of maybe it's better to walk, maybe it's better for our health, it's better for the environment. Yun. So yung state mo is a bit, I think, not as high as you want it to be. Or healthy as you want it to be, di ba? Aside from the environmental benef benefits of non-water responsibility, what other advantages do you use as trusts for your alcohol? Health is one important trust. Health and safety, I think, are well, two, actually. Safety. Because in order for you to have a truly inclusive mobility, it needs to be safe, right? And you, you need inclusive mobility, you need to walk or to cycle for your health. Especially nowadays, ang mga issues is really about obesity, diba? So those are major, I think, that you need to see. And the other is, of course, civility. You know your role. I mean, that's why you just you don't need you you just don't cross the street when it's you know you you need to learn. You need uh, aside from the environment benefit, it, it teaches you civility, meaning. Not to throw trash anywhere, the bayan. And in, it helps you to appreciate your city more. So, sa akin, that's very important. Eh. Yung, the culture itself, you know, of walking is something. Uh, as there are advantages, what do you think are the disadvantages of non motorized activities over the conventional means of transport? It's like this NMT is part of a transport system. It's not an alternative. I always say that you don't just use it as an alternative. One, because there's a cyclable distance for an ordinary person and there's a walkable distance for an ordinary person. I think at the end of the day, what you guys would want and what we want is that we have an option. We have an option whether we want to stay healthy, I can walk because the infrastructure is good enough to walk within this distance. I can cycle if I want to. And so it's really part of your door-to-door -door transport or mobility. It's not an alternative over which one is good. Well, what I'm saying is you can actually cycle for 5 kilometers, right? Rather than take a trip. Because that's more environmentally friendly. But do you have an option? Do you have the facility for that? So, yun yung mga issue. So, that's a, I think that's a, there's this certain misconception that NMT is an alternative mode. It's not an, it's not just an, it can be an alternative mode. But we have to understand that transportation is like crossing boundaries, right? It's crossing from one area to another. It's going from one city to another, right? So transport is actually a system. So when it's a system, all parts of the system should be good. Do you plan to, but to, to expand parang hindi lang sa metro of metro Manila? It's like this. We want to really go to all urbanizing areas, towns. We want to really preach the idea that, you know, mobility affects all of us. So initially, it's Metro Manila. But, you know, if there are call for us to assist other cities, we're doing that. Either on, you know, personal and even... I think all of us would like to be of assistance to the government, to any. So, that's the, also the other thing. Uh, mobility is not just us. It's also about you doing your share. And it's also about you preaching to other areas, other cities, maybe if you have the time, to discuss what you understood about what mobility and why you want to be involved and why you need to be involved. Right? So maybe, not maybe just us directly doing it, but also you. So that's why we want you guys to be involved on the idea of mobility. That's why it's also inclusive. The idea really is, okay, understand first the very basic why it's important. I understand that transportation is a system. Okay. It's, it's not just about vehicle. It's not just about the infrastructure. It's about how you plan your trip. It's about the people. Because at the end of the day, all of this demand is really done by the people. There's traffic because this is how we behave. There's traffic because... I live close but I choose to bring a car maybe because it's a status symbol. I don't know. 
Uh, there is traffic because we're not helping. Maybe we're not part of those helping the government to truly improve the system. We're not also demanding perhaps that can you make my city more walkable by improving the sidewalk as you say or the pedestrian spaces, the overpasses, right? Um, can we make it more inclusive wherein the elderly can easily move from one place to another? Wherein the person with disability, the blind or the one who uses a uh, wheelchair can easily move from one place to another. So those are the things. How can you make it more productive? So that's that's part of it. So it's not just, I don't think it's just about about where we are it's just not just about metro manila because at the end of the day what we want is a livable city what we want is a city wherein we can be very very proud of and now i'm going to interview Ms. Elaine guanzano will mobile um, what inspired you to serve the pwds and what is your main advocacy coffee or circle of friends foundation was founded in 1998 uh, advocacy of the, the foundation is to provide mobility, equality, and dignity to persons with disability. So, Wheelmobile, the birth of Wheelmobile was 2003 when it became uh, operational. As of now, we have four fleets. Uh, three uh, is opera uh, operational, are operational, and one was donated to Tahanang Walang Agdan, where uh, there are more or less 200 persons with disability. How was the reception of this project? Did people immediately accept it or were there some hindrances? Of course, at first, whatever products or uh, things that is new to, to the eyes of the people, at first they're hesitant, they don't know what, what if they look at our fans. But, oh, what is that? But, oh, something unique, something... Uh, parang, at first talaga, uh, hindi masyadong napapasin. Pero nung nakita nila yung, ano parang, oy pang mayaman lang, parang gano'n. Pero hindi, kasi uh, if you notice, wala tayong accessible transportation sa Pilipinas. Kahit isang bus, wala kang makikitang umabiyay sa EDSA. Yun yung nakakalungkot. Isa yun sa mga karapatan ng mga persons with disability na hindi naa-action na ng gobyerno. Pero salamat nga, uh, there is a wheelmobile na sa ngayon nagagamit na siya. Na, uh, yung, nag, nagkaroon siya ng malaking silbi sa aming mga PWDs. As of now, yung mga kinikater niya, yung mga PWDs na talaga hirap na hirap bumiyahe, hirap sumakay ng taxi, hirap maghintay na paparahan kami ng taxi. Using the wheelmobile, it really gives comfort and safety to PWDs alike about pedestrianizing the whole Metro Manila or putting bicycle lanes, yung mga ganun po, napapag-usapan na po gayon within Of the course, park. actually, there are some cities na nagpapatupad na ng mga carless day, like the Pasig, uh, in Manila. Pero yun nga ang problema eh, kasi may katapat na, na problema sa implementasyon noon. Parang limit una, limitado lang yung araw. Uh, yung bike lane nila, Pag Sabado Linggo, parang papasok ko Sabado Linggo, parang gano'n. So, masusing pinag-aaralan ngayon ng, ng iba't ibang sektor, ng iba't ibang universidad, kung papaano masusolusyonan talaga. Marami na rin sa Makati City. Uh, we are member of the CC Clean City Makati Coalition, CCMC. CCMC. Uh, PWDs are involved in that because uh, uh, really we make ourselves inclusive to whatever project our lgu is uh, implementing or doing or planning we want to to be part of it and we're thankful because yung yung grupo na na, na nag-initiate na is uh, involved sa mga uh, programs namin kaya na-include kami and as of now there are some universities that are planning imagine 2040 urban planning so, I'm sure naman, uh, maaring malapit na yung solusyon, pero yun nga, mahirap, mahirap talaga. Pero kung magtutulong-tulungan tayo, I'm sure magagawa ng para. Thank you for your time. We've learned a lot. Hope to see you again. Of course.